what's up everybody it's soren baker here on unique access best albums joined by the general trey d thank you for coming through mm. sir you already know it bro and man today we're talking about one of the best albums in rap history eric b and rock kim paid in full yes, trey yes. d man this album came out in 1987 it's one of my all-time favorite albums also but for you why is it the best album wow i mean i was uh I was 21 years old, mm. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the streets was, you know, that, I mean, it was the height of everything. I mean, you know, the height of hip hop, the height of gang culture, mm. the height of drug selling and abuse, and it was just everything was going on, and. Um, you know, that was something that, you know, we could we could put in our cars or, you know, throw on when we was chilling at the spot, you know, getting our hustle on and just let it play all the way through and the intricacy of Rakim's lyricism and the drive of Eric B's production, you know, the marriage was just it was unbelievable, man. You know what I'm saying? It just it just gave you the spirit to, you know what I'm saying, to, to get out there and, and, and do what needed to be done to, you know, get your shine on. Yeah, man. And uh, one of the, obviously, let's start with the title track, man, Paid in Full, because I love that song. And it literally, I probably had listened to it more than 100 times before I realized it was only one verse. Right. right. <laughs> it was like, wait a second, this is only one verse? Yeah, yeah. He gave you a pretty good intro, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, you know, and... Um, I wound up redoing that on uh, on the mixtape right. I put out right before I got out of prison called Long Beach State of Mind. Mm -hmm. um, me and my homeboy Seabird, you know, I had him acting like Eric B with the commentary, <laughs> you know, and I, I just changed the words up, you right. know, uh, like we, you know, like all hip hop. You know, that's one thing people probably not familiar with about hip hop. We, we, you know, it all depends on what region you, you're you in and, mm. you know, what your activity is. You know, you take the songs and you change parts of it up to suit, right, right. you know, your city and, and things like that. And that's what really makes makes hip-hop unique and fun, mm -hmm. you know. And one of the other songs that I thought, especially when it came out, that was so unique was the I Ain't No Joke. Because, oh, yeah. man, when that came on, it had, like, it had those like super powerful like horn type of things and then Rakim was just coming in slaughtering it and then yeah. it, then they had like Flavor Flav in the video right, and I was just right. like man this song is incredible <laughs> right so right. with the I Ain't No Joke what did you uh, take from that song? Raw lyricism like you know I don't care what y'all out there in the industry doing you know what's going on at y'all shows whatever when I show up Salute, you know, <laughs> uh, polish the crown, whatever you want to do. But you know, I'm here, and right. you know, I, you know, I can't be denied. Bar for bar, he's he inspired me to write and show concern for every line that I wrote. And you know, later on, I wind up reading that he he said, you know, he took each line as a challenge. Mm you know, to to outdo the line itself and uh, go to another song, I Know You Got Soul. Right. I think that's one of the best bars in hip hop is I start to think and then I sink into the, into the paper like I was ink. When I'm writing, I'm trapped in between the lines. I escape when I finish the line. That was, that, I mean, just his, yeah, he, he, he was murdering, man. Yeah, and murdering. it's funny you say that because you know, growing up in Maryland, uh, fortunately, my parents subscribed uh, to the newspapers, and my dad uh, especially would read them and make sure I did too. And I'll never forget, man, reading in the Washington Post, they basically took those lines and explained, like, why rap should be regarded as poetry because Ooh. of how intricate and ingenious that passage from that song was. Whoa, that was in the newspaper in Maryland? In, in the Washington Post. Yep. Wow, that's heavy. That's so heavy. I was like blown away. And, you know, my dad was like, not only did he want me to read it, but he also wanted me to read it to see like how someone that wasn't really like down with rap all the way mm -hmm. could appreciate and understand it so it gave me a level of 
understanding and appreciation of rap even more than I already had as a super fan. But even then, that gave it a more of a validation that like people outside could kind of see like how ingenious what he was doing. Right. Was. And it right. was Rock him. Yeah, yeah. He deserved it, man. He definitely yeah. deserved it. And I know uh, another incredible song that a lot of people talk about is My Melody. <laughs> and that has, of course, the 21 MCs. Uh, line in there, <laughs> which you, has, has more than one yeah. meaning for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> yeah, now um, that right there, that was what got a lot of people through hard nights facing serious court cases in 4800. Uh, you know, I had a I had a homie who I was close with back then. And come 9, 30, 10 o'clock, we would fold a mattress over on the bunk mm -hmm. and use that steel and get a toothbrush or a grease jar and we just bang on the bed till 1 or 2 in the morning doing the whole paid and full album. <laughs> and everybody, hey, do that. Hey, my melody again, y'all. I mean, and we'd just be up half the night just right. going, you know, and just learning you know, just, just learning his patterns and formats and stuff. When I began to write rhymes, you know, that was a natural influence to me because I thought he was one of the dopest lyricists ever, you know, and, and one of the one of the best MCs to ever pick up a mic. So, you know, I, I give a lot of props for just becoming the artist who I am, you know, to, to rock him and to Eric B because, you know, those beats, you know, without those without those tracks you know, it was just been a cappella. It was just been spoken word. And that's why they made Eric B. his president, because they made such a, a dynamic duo and fantastic partnership. So with Eric B. as president, I remember thinking when that came out, I was just like, wow, they're putting themselves on a pedestal like that? And, and that was even impressive to me. Like, forget, I hadn't even got to the song yet. Just when I read the title, yeah. I was like, wow. You know, <laughs> yeah. These dudes. yeah, that has some of the best scratching in it, too. Well, uh, the other thing that's interesting about the album is that with Chinese arithmetic, and um, even when even though the beat goes on, they're still rapping on it, but with Chinese arithmetic, you know, they had the instrumental there. And this was in an era in 87, and, and we saw it for another year or two in rap where the albums had instrumentals on it. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. uh, for you, what did, uh, as somebody that later became an artist, did, what did you think when you would hear an album and it would have an instrumental on it, on a rap album? Hmm. Well, this in particular, Chinese arithmetic, I, honestly, I was so eager to learn what Rakim was saying mm -hmm. that maybe for the first few months, I would bypass that. Mm, okay. And then when when I would just sit up and just play the album afterwards, when I finally listened to it and I heard all the breaks and the cuts and the different sounds in it, I said, wow, this is ingenious. And me and Eric, we good friends now. Oh, okay. So so <laughs> you know, I, I call him, I called him, matter of fact, about about six or seven weeks ago to tell him. Like, man, that Chinese arithmetic, you was not playing. You know what I mean? It was it's just so much going on in there. But hearing instrumentals on the album, that just that just lets you know that the, the producer and the artist knew that, you know, this was something that would excite the crowd. And you always want to leave a part of a good beat on the song. I still do that to this day to, you know, to, to let people who, and you know you got a hit when people, you see people listen to your song and then they start rhyming on the beat. Right. You be like, okay, I got one. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it was good. It was good uh, to, to, to hear uh, to hear instrumentals and, and um, get people take on, on, um, on music outside of the lyrics as well. Yeah, so now when you look back, what do you think is the legacy of Eric B. and Rakim's Paid in Full? I think they set the standard for any MC who aspires to be a lyricist without without studying from the school of Eric B. and Rakim, you're doing yourself a great disservice. Yeah, I be would agree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I mean, you know, it was 
day where, you know, nobody smiling, you know, it was, it was hip hop, you know, it was raw, you know what I mean? And, you know, I never lived on the East Coast, but going out there after I got in the game and really absorbing their culture and, and knowing how they, you know, knowing how they got down and knowing how they really take to music and, you know, take pride in their burrows and stuff like that, man, hey, that guy. That guy did a whole lot for hip hop, man. It, it it started over there and it reached all the way over here, yeah. you know. I mean, and not saying he's the originator or nothing like that, but it's just his style and his confidence and his approach to rap and his vocabulary and his structure of, of words and you know, and it seemed like Eric B had the perfect backdrop for what he, you know, for what he needed to say. There it is, y'all. That's why Eric B. and Rock Kim's Pay the Fool is the best album. And that's why we're here on Unique Access. Soren Baker, Trey D. Yes, yes. Appreciate you coming through, sir. Right on, bro.